Let us pray. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. 2 Samuel 6-7 Dear Lord, I love you to the depth of my being. I tremble when considering those who do not love you and anger you. And yet your love goes deeper than any sin. You broke the power of sin against you when you hung on the cross and poured your life out in place of mine. By your sacrificial act of love, I know you are ready to forgive me when I recognize my sin and repent. There are times, Lord, when I disobey you without intending to do so. Other times, I disobey you and I recklessly don't care. Nevertheless, Lord, you are there to offer me life through forgiveness and cleansing from your judgments. You are patient and kind and slow to anger, and you send your Holy Spirit to hover over me, to open my heart to your word and ways. He always points me to you and your wisdom and helps me choose to obey you and repent for my sins. You give me time to recognize the error of my ways and find remorse over displeasing you, so I am quick to repent and don't have to face your wrath. When I think of your love and goodness, I want to sing, shout, and praise you for all to hear and be drawn to you, Lord, my Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's daily prayer. For more inspiration and an incredible message from our feature pastor, stay tuned to Pray.com's Sunday service. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What are some things that you want to keep the same about yourself or your life in 2024? Where are you already crushing it? Think opposite of New Year, New You. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so that you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Sunday service today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Sunday service. Hello, this is Matt Potter from Pray.com, and I want to tell you about this new juice cleanse I've tried from Squeeze.com. As someone who's always on the lookout for healthy ways to enhance my daily life, I must say this juice cleanse has been nothing short of rejuvenating. While drinking the juices provided by Squeeze.com, I felt less bloated and had a noticeable increase in my energy levels throughout the day. This cleanse has been a game changer. Juice cleanses can range from one day cleanse to a seven day cleanse. Each bottle is labeled with a number of one to five. The number corresponds to the order to drink your juice. It's super easy. You also get a bottle of cashew milk to provide the body with protein, amino acids, and just the right amount of added substance to ease into the cleanse while keeping your cravings minimal. You will also get free and fast delivery with our promo code. Head to squeeze.com and enter the code SUNDAY for free same-day local delivery or fast free delivery nationwide. Do you expect the best for your family in school, sports, and life? If so, you should expect the best from your food as well. With your active and healthy lifestyle, feed your loved ones amazing food like Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs. Eggland's Best hens, including pasture-raised and free-range, eat a unique patented all-vegetarian feed, so they lay naturally better eggs, offering your family superior nutrition. Their chickens eat better, so you can too. Eggland's Best pasture-raised and free-range eggs are now available. So don't 
don't settle for anything less. With six times more vitamin D, ten times more vitamin E, and more than double the vitamin B12 compared to ordinary eggs, Eggland's best pasture-raised and free-range eggs stay fresh longer, and they taste great every time. Give yourself and your family only the best eggs. Give them Eggland's best. Expect the best from your food, like Eggland's best pasture-raised and free-range eggs. Look for Eggland's best pasture-raised and free-range eggs with superior nutrition today, now available at your local grocer. Welcome to Miracles Now. I'm Brian Bolt. God does miracles now. Man, God is going to bless you today. I believe a supernatural touch from heaven is going to invade your life. One of the greatest things that is coming against Christians is a spirit of offense. We have so many people that are offended about everything. And you cannot walk in the fullness of God. You cannot walk in a personal revival with a spirit of offense. God wants to deliver you of that today. God wants to set you free. He is a chain breaker. That spirit of offense is holding you back. It's making you look through life and look through what God is doing through a little window. I've titled this message today, Wounded Windows. We have too many Christians looking through wounded windows. I believe today God's going to get you out of that isolated room. God's going to get you out from behind that window and you're going to start rejoicing in everything God is doing. I believe the best is yet to come and I believe God is going to do a miracle in your life right now. I want you to check out everything we're doing at bbworldevangelism.com. But as we get ready to join the Great City Reach Church there in Whittier, California, I want you to get ready, take notes, open up your heart to receive everything God wants to do. God is going to deliver you today from that isolated room, from that vantage point, from that view of the wounded window. Watch what God will do right now. We declare the miracle working power of Jesus all over you. All right, before you're seated, I'm going to now read 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 12 through 16, and then I'll give you the title of my message. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with a sound of the trumpet. Now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Let me give you the title before I have Natalie pray. This message I am titling, Wounded Window. So every hand lifted. We thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of the living God in this tabernacle and for those watching online. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are not limited by distance or time. We say, have your way and raise up a people on fire for you and in revival in Jesus' name. Can I get a loud amen? All right, you can be seated. Like I said, I really wanted to preach this message tonight. And I really wanted to talk about what I'm talking about tonight, this morning. But God had a different plan. And how many know we're just yielded vessels to God? Can I get a loud amen? I mean, I I was, I so wanted to preach what I'm preaching tonight, this morning, that I, I kept going to God and I kept going to everyone around me. And I kept saying, you know, I'm really feeling this. I wanted them to talk me into the message tonight. But everybody kept saying, no, you need to preach this. And God kept pointing this direction over and over and over again. How many know sometimes when you don't want to do what God wants you to do, you look for someone to sign your check to tell you that you really shouldn't do it? 
I'm grateful that I got a wife and some people around me that don't sign the check. Can I get a loud amen? I'm here to let you know we need a fresh outpouring of God's spirit. I'm believing that a personal revival is going to hit your life. I, I know we talk about revival quite a bit here, and I believe that the answer to the problems of this world is Jesus, and I believe Jesus' answers to the problem of this world is his church, and I believe what the church needs more than anything is revival. Can I get a loud amen if you believe that? I, I believe that God is going to heal people today. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, someone that needs healed today because you are wounded. I've come with a message today called the wounded window. And I want you to understand we serve a God that can heal. We serve a God that can save. We serve a God that can deliver. How many believe that here today? David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to the city of David. And I want you to understand this. The Ark represents the presence and the glory, say glory, of God. I don't know about you, but I want the glory of God in my life. I want the glory of God in this church. I want the glory of God in my house. I want the glory of God in your house. I need the glory of God. If you need the glory of God, give Jesus a hand clap and a shout real quick. This story really begins because the ark was missing from the people of God for 40 years and three months. It was taken from the sons of Eli, the high priest, and including a 22-year reign of King Saul, it seemed like nobody was interested in bringing the glory of God back into their house. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3 says this, and I like it in the NIV version because it makes it real plain. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. You know, there's a lot of people that don't want the glory of God in their house. There's a lot of Christians that don't want the glory of God in their church. There's a lot of people that do not want a personal revival. They're okay just living and doing what they're doing. They're okay with the status quo. They're okay living the way they're living. And I'll explain why. See, that all changed after 40 years. The ark was absence, but the new king, David, say David, sat on that throne and he said, Saul, my, the former king might not have been interested in bringing back the ark, but I can't rule this kingdom without the glory and the presence of God. And David said, I'm going to make it my mission to bring back the glory of God to my house, to my city. I don't know if anybody's on mission today, but I'm on mission to bring the glory of God back to Whittier, the revival fire back to this city, back to California, back to Los Angeles for the glory of Jesus. How many believe that here today? I can't operate without the glory. There might be some strategic minds here in the house that can do things without the glory and presence of God, but let me tell you, it will only take you so far. We need the glory. We need the presence of God. David learned it didn't turn out too good for King Saul. Maybe I need the presence and glory of God. Can I get a loud amen? See, I don't want to operate anything without the glory. The ark was at Obed-Edom's house. Obed-Edom's world was experiencing revival. Everything was coming alive. God was blessing his house abundantly. Everybody heard what is happening at Obed-Edom's house. 
I want Natalie just to walk through this a little bit. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him. Stop. Let me tell you, I believe there's a blessing coming to your house. I believe there's a blessing coming to your house. You may be renting a house now, and you may say, Pastor Brian, this isn't the time to buy with interest rates. That's fine with, with what the world says, but I'm here to tell you, when God blesses you, he blesses you, and the blessing of God is coming to your house greater than ever before. If you say, God, I want your glory, I want your presence in my house. Can I get a loud amen? Everything was being blessed. When the glory and presence of God is in your house, everything's blessed. We got too many houses that aren't blessed. It's because the glory is not there. We got too many churches that don't have the glory and presence of God. I, 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 I need the glory. I need the presence. We can't function without it. So it says this because of the ark of god so david went and brought up the ark of god from the house of obed edom to the city of david with gladness this is what he said if it's blessing obed edom's house so much and i bring it to my house if it blessed his house it's going to bless my house and i'm here to tell someone today what is blessing my house what is blessing this house can bless your house today in the name of jesus it's the glory of god it's the presence and the power of god can i get a loud amen now i want you to understand this with all sincerity it's interesting and i want now they just to read the next verse and i'm going to probably go back through these quite a bit and so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that they sacrificed oxen. I can't wait to preach this part, but I got to save this to the end. So just hold tight. They sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Stop. Israel. All the house. They're bringing revival back to the city of David. All of the house got involved. Everybody got involved. Everybody's out there and saying, look, we want revival. We want personal revival. We want the glory of God. We want the power of God. And if it worked at Obed Edom's house, we're bringing it to our house. Let me tell you, this is a team thing. Come on, somebody. I want it for your house as much as I want it for your neighbor's house and my house. I'm here to tell someone revival is coming to your house. What does that mean? I mean your son that right now is lukewarm is going to catch a fire. That backslidden son and daughter are going to experience the fire of God, experience the miracle working power of Jesus. Grandma in your house that's just chilling is going to experience a wave of the glory of God. I'm here to tell you, your auntie and uncle that are living with you are going to experience a wave of revival because all the house of Israel is bringing it up Ooh. they're bringing it back they're bringing revival back because let me tell you when you have the glory of God you will have revival everything that the glory touches will be revived can I get a loud amen see the Bible says it was such a big deal so amazing such an amazing occurrence that they stopped every six paces and made sacrifice to the lord now i'm gonna get back to that because that that as i began to study that that really blew my mind tap your neighbor say you sure aren't ready for that tap your other neighbor the one that really doesn't look ready say look i didn't want to do this but you definitely aren't ready can i get a loud amen See, David was involved, say involved. 
in the praise and worship of God, he actually exhausted himself. He traded carnal dignity for righteous purity. See, Saul might not have wanted it, but this King David wanted revival glory. He wanted the revival. He wanted the glory of God. He was desperate. Say desperate. He took off his royal robes and he stripped off all his ego. For all of us know the Bible and it shows us a picture of King David striving for revival, striving for the glory of God. But there's another player in this story, in this drama. Her name is Michael. She was the daughter of Saul and the wife of King David. As you read the word, you can see a huge difference between David and Michael. Huge difference. One wanted the glory so bad that he would do whatever it took. If it made him look like a fool, he'd become a fool for Christ. But this other person, the daughter of King Saul, the former king, and the wife of David, David is definitely a picture of pursuit for revival, a sold out spirit with a heart of purity and extravagant worship. Michael is a picture of a lack of pursuit, a lack of pursuit for revival, even a hindrance to personal revival, calloused, apathetic, full of excuses. It's two different pictures. One is a hindrance to revival and one is pursuing revival. For years, we have painted Michael a villain in this story, but we've never considered all the reason why Michael manifested such disdain for the events happening that day. One of the reasons, say one, Say with a little authority, say one. One One of the reasons she had such disdain for what God was trying to do is because somewhere, say somewhere, somewhere, her spirit had been wounded and hurt. For instance, family problems. Her father tried to kill her husband. Um, No one's ever had family problems up in this camp. All right. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm preaching to myself. Can I get a loud amen? There was some family problems. When your daddy wants to kill your husband, that's a problem. Can I get a loud amen? She had to live through that. You don't think that wounded her? You don't think that did a number on her? You don't think that did something to her? Let me tell you, some of you have experienced family problems. And I don't know what kind of family problems you've experienced, but you've experienced it. Can I get a loud amen? I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know I'm talking to somebody. If this, ser- if this sermon's just for one person, I'll preach it for one. I'll preach it with everything I got just for you so you can get set free and God can heal you. She had distrust, say distrust. It wounded her. Remember her brother helped the enemy of her father, family problems. Maybe her wounds were self-inflicted. After all, the same Michael was in a relationship with another man while she was married to David. So many more reasons for the wounds. When I survey the word, she could have felt wounded for so many reasons. Can I get an amen? amen. I want you to listen to me today. Nevertheless, say nevertheless. nevertheless. 
just like us trying to serve God today. Is anybody trying to serve God? Lift your hands. She encountered things in her world that left her spirit wounded. I know church hurt is a popular word nowadays. And I know someone wounded you, whether it was a pastor, a leader, especially the worship pastors, they are the worst. Come on, somebody. Especially the pastor's wives. Come on, somebody. They wound you the most. Can I get a loud amen? I know people are church hurt. I know people are wounded. But I'm here to tell you today that no matter what you've encountered, family problems, issues with your marriage, issues with your spouse, issues with church, issues with that or this. I'm here to tell you today, by the blood of Jesus, he can heal you today in a moment. One touch from God can heal you. One touch from Jesus can heal you. Things that leave us wounded and confused. We're wounded by people that we love. We're wounded by our critics. Come on, somebody. We're wounded by our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're wounded by pastors and leaders. We're wounded by our bosses and our jobs. We're wounded by political peoples. We're wounded by our own failures. We're wounded by from a lack of effort of others. Wounds, 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 wounds. Wounds will hinder the kingdom of God advancing in your life. Unhealed wounds will hinder a personal revival in your life. I'm just getting started. Tap your neighbor and say, this might be the one you didn't want to come to. Come on, somebody. If you want to get healed, this is not the place to be today. Come on, somebody. Matthew 24, verse 6 says this, 6 through 10. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I love that these are going to happen in the last days. Verse Keep seven. going. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And the many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Read that first part again. Maybe people didn't hear it. And the many will be offended. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I don't remember so many people being offended the way they're offended now. We're living in a time where everybody's offended about everything. You can get offended over the color of the carpet. You can get offended if I say grasshopper or cricket. Come on, somebody. You can get offended if I say this or that. We live in a world where everybody's offended over everything. And and you can see it in our politics. Come on, somebody. You can see it all over. Everybody's offended about everything. I'm offended about the school you go to. I'd rather homeschool my kids. I'd rather send my kids to school. Man, let me tell you, we're offended about everything. I'd rather have a pastor that dressed hip and cool. I'd rather have a pastor that dresses in a suit, good looking, debonair, suave, like Pastor Brian. I get it. I get it. Not everybody can be suave and debonair. Come on, somebody. It's a gift from God. Can I get a man? But you shouldn't be offended at that leader that isn't suave and debonair like me. Come on, somebody. I'm here to tell you, we are offended with everything. The world is in constant offense towards one another. You said this. You preached like that. You did like this. You taught this. You, oh, the worship team. I love, uh, this is my favorite thing to pick on. Come on, somebody. I don't like that organ. Come on, somebody. Well, I don't really care what you like. I like it. (laughs) Tap your neighbor and say, Pastor Brian likes it, and he's the one preaching. (laughs) When you preach, you can have an organ or you don't. Come on, somebody. We're offended with everything. 
We're offended over everything. We live in a world of constant, constant offense. Hebrews 12, 15, I'm gonna read it. It says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of this grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, cause trouble, and by this, many become defiled. Your offense can turn into a root of bitterness. Your offense not dealt with can turn into a root of bitterness. And all of a sudden, you're bitter towards everything. Wounds left unhealed affects everything. They affect your children, they affect your grandchildren, they affect everything around you. Wounds left unhealed affect everything. Oh, I know no one likes this one. Including the personal revival you are seeking after. Wounds can hinder, say hinder, God's plan for your life. It can clearly be seen in this story of Michael. She was wounded instead of next to her husband rejoicing. She should have been next to her man. Come on, somebody. Next to her boo bear. Come on. I, I'm glad that I got a woman. When I start praising God, she gets right next to me. Come here, baby. She should have been next to her man, but she wasn't. She was wounded. Say wounded. Say wounded. Instead of rejoicing with all of Israel, she was wounded. Everybody's rejoicing. The Ark of the Covenant is coming back. The glory of God has been absent for 40 years. And she's not rejoicing. A revival is being ushered in. She isolated herself looking through a window in a lonely room. Through that window, she could only see a partial picture. Through a wounded window, you only see a partial picture. You can't see the full picture. Through the wounded window, you can only see a glimpse of revival. You can only see the little bit of revival. You can only see a glimpse. Through the wounded window, you can only see a partial glimpse of what's happening. Can I get a loud amen? Just looking through a little window. That was her vantage point, that little window. On the day that should have been so spiritually significant for her house, for her family, for the house of Israel, instead of participating with the kingdom and ushering revival in, Michael was isolated, say isolated. The place where the wounded always go. The wounded always go towards isolation. I got I to gotta isolate. You isolate because you're wounded. And the enemy so much, he's so tactical that he wants to isolate you from your brothers and sisters in the Lord. He wants to isolate you from church. Oh. He, he, he wants you to stop coming to church. He doesn't want iron to sharpen iron. He doesn't want you to, don't get involved in discipleship night. Don't get involved on Wednesday night. Don't get involved. Don't get involved. Don't get involved. Because they're just going to hurt you again. I'm here to tell you. Restricted to a window that only shows a little glimpse is not how God wants you to live. When you only see just that little bit, that's not the way God wants you to live. I only see a little glimpse of revival. I only see a little glimpse of the glory. In ministry, I've seen so many people like this. They feel wounded and they wind up in a room all by themselves with just a little window. 
close enough close enough to see the glory to see a glimpse but so far away they find themselves limited only sensing from a distance revival that others are flowing in I don't know about you but I want to flow in the revival fires of God how many want to be flowing in the Spirit of God I want to be flowing in God's Spirit the problem and the danger of the wounded window is you can't see the fullness of God and you can't see the fullness of what God is doing the Bible said Michael looked through a window not a balcony a lot of times when we picture this story we think of a balcony that she could walk out on it's just a little window mm. some people here today you're watching God move through just a little window you only catch parts of it God wants you to have a personal revival I know you can't see it through the wounded window it's too small to see the big picture see the window was big enough to see the things that frustrated her flesh but it was too small to see the revival what revival would do for her see, it was big enough to frustrate her flesh but it was too small to see what the glory of God would do for her the window is big enough to see things she didn't like but the window was too small to see the revival she needed the window was big enough to see aspects of revival that offended her but it was too small to see all the things God was offering her I came to preach a word today come out from behind the wounded window and let God heal your life in Jesus name you'll never see the fullness of God behind that window you'll never experience the revival God has for you and your family behind that window you'll never experience everything God has for you behind that wounded window doesn't matter how good services are doesn't matter how thick the presence of God oh I need to preach to someone here today you can come in here and God could be moving supernaturally the presence of God be so thick so tangible you could cut it with a knife but because you're only looking through the wounded window you can't get a touch of it you can't someone here today needs to get out of that room get out from the window and experience the healing of Jesus can I get a shout of praise if you want to be healed and made whole doesn't matter how much pure the power of God is you won't see it through the wounded window doesn't matter how intense the anointing is you won't see it through the wounded window a personal glorious revival is coming your way you just can't see it God told me he wants to bless your house that's why I want to talk tonight about curses because I'm gonna break every curse in the name of Jesus every curse is getting broken Jesus is the one that breaks every curse God says he wants to bless you abundantly but he can't bless you through the window you're looking at because you can't see the full picture you can't see the big thing that's happening you should be rejoicing but God says get out from behind that window and get out on the street and start dancing a wounded window she could see the emotional involvement revival required mm. salvation is free everything else will cost you something but she couldn't see how the radical worship could protect her personal revival see David understood I don't need a little bit of praise I need some radical praise her view was too restricted to see she needed to humble herself listen to me if you want a personal revival get invested into it her problem was she was limited her view limited her 
she needed a view that would cause her to act like nothing else mattered but God. I want to get to a place where our church, 100% of our church says, the only thing that matters is what matters to God. I believe God is raising up an army in this last day that are so on fire for God that we don't want Jesus, we need Jesus. I need him in the morning, I need him in the afternoon, I need him in the evening. The view I have is not a limited view, it's a view of the fullness of God. Your praise can protect your personal revival. See, you see, laying down our pride is a requirement for this. Laying down our pride is a requirement for this. I'll tell you a funny story that my mother told me years ago. She told me, she said, I love my mother. We were talking and she said, I, Brian, I have mastered humility. I said, Mom, I hate to correct you, but usually when you talk like that, you have not mastered humility. If some people here today think you have mastered humility, you might be struggling with a little bit of pride. I'm here today, you gotta realize, you gotta leave your pride at the altar day in and day out. It's not a one-time thing, it's an everyday thing. Don't let my pride get in the way. Don't let me get in the way. God, I want you more. I need you more. Let my pride die. Let it not be about me, God. Let it be about all about you. You can't do it just once. It's a daily thing. The apostle Paul says, I die daily. Mm. See, I'm too, too dignified to worship like that. I could hear her saying, someone of my stature, to lower myself to worship like that. I'm ready to preach this part, ready? I'm too pretty to praise. I'm too pretty to praise God like that. I may mess up my makeup, I'm too pretty to praise God. Oh, I ain't done yet. I'm too stylish to shout. I can't look like that. I'm too stylish. Come on, somebody. I'm too dignified to dance. Your problem is you're too proud to reach for Jesus for revival. Let me tell you where the problem is. Somewhere, let me tell you what your problem is. Somewhere somebody hurt you. Somewhere somebody did you wrong. I have been there. I understand. Now all you can see that is going, oh, all you can see is what is required to become emotionally invested to see God change your world. See, there's no halfway with a personal revival. Radical praise protects your personal revival. It's interesting that from the wounded window, you can't see a reason to worship the way David worshiped. God is gonna do a miracle today, I declare in the name of Jesus. I declare some people that have never praised God with all your heart, mind, and soul will lift up a voice of triumph and praise God for who he is. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, the Bible says. Somebody can change their world if you get your worship back. Praise protects your personal revival. I can't say it enough. Praise puts your eyes off the problem and back on God. Praise delivers you from a sense of entitlement. It's not about you, it's about Him. Praise strips away your pride. Praise purifies your desires. I'm here to tell someone today, praise shields you from discouragement. 
you can praise and worship your way to a personal revival. Can I get a loud amen? Can I get a loud amen? Can I get a loud amen? Hallelujah. I remember one time, I believe it was Honduras. We were doing a crusade there in Honduras. And I remember someone came up to me, I think it was Pastor Bill, and said, there are a bunch of witches that are coming to the crusade and they have put a curse on you and they want to kill you. I just started praising God. You say, what's wrong with you, Pastor Brian? Why would you praise God? Because I knew they were going to get saved. They were going to get delivered of witchcraft and God was going to do a miracle in their life. Sometimes praising God puts you in the right frame of mind. Can I get a loud amen? That thing that's coming to destroy you isn't going to destroy you. It's going to catapult you to where you need to be. That problem is not a problem. It's a blessing in disguise. Let me tell you, when someone's trying to kill you for the sake of Christ, you have entered a amazing miracle zone. Come on, somebody. My prayer is that you get threatened for Jesus quite a bit. My prayer is that you get so threatened you don't know what to do. And you'll just start praising God, you've been good to me in the valley. You've been good to me on the... I lift up the name of Jesus. The wounded window. Michael could see what commitment revival required. She couldn't see how God's glory followed that commitment. See, everybody sees the commitment and then shies away. But they don't see the glory that follows that commitment. Mm. Consider the people of God marching from Obed-Edom's house to the city of David. It was three and a half miles. Say three and a half miles. They stopped, the Bible says, every six paces. Six steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They would stop. They'd make sacrifice and they'd praise God. Now, an average man, three and a half miles is about... 7,000 steps for an average man. That means they stopped, get, get out your calculator, they stopped 1,167 times to offer praise to God. I'm gonna say it again, they stopped 1,167 times to give praise to God. You come once a week to church, David knew it was a commitment to bring the ark back. So 1,167 times they would stop, make a burnt offering, and praise God. You ain't hearing me yet. Make a sacrifice. If their praise was only five minutes long, say five minutes. Say five minutes. That three and a half miles would have took four days for just five minutes every time they stopped. Commitment is required. It is not an option. Commitment is required if you want the glory of God in your house and flowing through your family. A commitment is required. Commitment is required to do this walk with Jesus. David knew the kind of commitment that would bring the glory to his house. The kind of commitment that would bring revival to his house. David could see the glory following the commitment. All Michael could see from the wounded window was how much revival would demand from her. She saw all the dancing and shouting, and it was ugly to her. The Bible still talks about the beauty of holiness. Holiness is not an ugly thing. 
I don't care how many churches throw out holiness, commitment to standards. Your godly commitments will bring revival to your life. It's those godly commitments that bring the glory of God. Holiness is not an outdated thing. It's a mandated thing. And let me tell you, you don't just throw out holiness. You just don't throw out godly standards because every other church is doing it. It's not an outdated thing. It's a mandated thing by the throne room of heaven. I want to do what's mandated by God. If that's you, give him a shout. Look at the places that have cast out, that have thrown out godly commitments. They got no glory. They got no power. They got no revival. They got nothing. And I'm here to tell you, we will keep godly commitments at this house and we will keep them at my house. And we will say, God, holiness, we will be holy as you are holy. Come on, I'm glad there's a generation that's getting raised up through young adults, through youth. I talked to a young man I was so proud of. He said, you know what? I want to stay pure until my wedding night. Let me tell you, if that doesn't make you shout, come on, somebody. If that doesn't make you proud, come on, somebody. Well, I didn't grow up that way. It doesn't matter how you grew up. Don't be looking through the wounded window. Let's celebrate what God is doing in his life. Come on, somebody. I'm grateful that we got a generation that wants to be holy. Come on, somebody. Places that have thrown out godly standards, that have thrown out holiness, they have to rely on gimmicks and programs. They have to rely on stunts to get people to church. There isn't enough godly commitment to keep the glory present. Come on, somebody. Because you're looking through a wounded window, you'll miss it. I'm tired of people looking through things through a wounded window. Get your healing today. Get your breakthrough today. Get the fire of God back in your life today. But you see the godly commitments as ugly and extreme. God wants to bring a personal revival to your life. Those commitments will bring and keep revival in your life. Through the wounded window, Michael could see the sacrifice that revival demands, but she couldn't see the blessing that revival was going to bring to her. She saw the sacrifice. That's all she could see. One of the reasons King David brought the ark back from Obed-Edom because everything in Obed-Edom's house was getting blessed. If it can bless that house, it can bless my house. How many want God to bless your house right where you're at? How many want God to bless your children? How many God want God to bless your family? I'm believing in this next season, God's gonna raise up your sons and daughters that will do such great things for God. He'll raise up businessmen and businesswomen in your house. God will raise up doctors and lawyers that are kingdom people for the glory of God. Second Samuel 6, 13. I want Natalie to read this again because I'm not done with my steps. Say it took 1,167 steps. No one's a mathematician here in the house. Praise God. I want Natalie to read it. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Now you better get your your calculator out because I've done the math. If they only sacrificed one oxen, say one oxen and one fatted sheep, that means they would have sacrificed 2,000. 234 animals if they just did one oxen and one fatted sheep every time. 2,234 animals. Do the math. That's the kind of sacrifice you have to have for a glory of God to invade your life, to invade your house. In David's mind, that was a reasonable sacrifice. But to Michael... She said, I don't think it takes that much. We got a lot of people in churches that say, I don't think it takes that much. But I'm here to tell you, if David at the minimum 
had to sacrifice 2,234 animals just to get the glory of God into the city. I'm willing to sacrifice time. I'm willing to sacrifice money. I'm willing to sacrifice these things because I want the glory of God. I've tasted it. I've seen it. The glory, the revival demands a sacrifice. Sacrifice of effort. Say effort. Sacrifice of money. Sacrifice of your comfort. Sacrifice of your pride. Sacrifice of forgiveness. You have to learn that if you want to see the glory running through your house and running through your family, it takes sacrifice. But a lot of people won't do the sacrifice because they tried to do that before and they got wounded. I I did that before a little bit and you know, I got wounded. And I only see things now through that window. The revival and glory of God is worth the sacrifice. See through the window, you can see the commitment as extreme, ugly, but you're missing the blessing. You're missing the blessing. You're missing the glory. I know why you're looking through the wounded window. Someone hurt you. Someone betrayed you. Someone lied on you. Someone did you wrong. We've all looked at things that way. But it takes someone to say, that's not where you're supposed to be. It takes someone to say, get out of the room. We're rejoicing on the street. We're rejoicing here at church. The presence of God is here. The glory of God is here. What you've been praying for for years is happening. And it wants to come to your house. You got to come out from the room if you want to experience the personal revival God has for you. Can you imagine living close enough to the things of God that you can hear the voice of the prophet you can feel the brush of God but you'll never be able to see what God wants to do in your life you need to be healed or you'll miss the personal revival if you keep hiding behind if you keep hiding behind that window that wounded window you'll miss it There was a man named Ahithophel, one of King David's most trusted advisors. Jewish history says when he spoke, it was like God speaking. Years he served King David in that capacity. But many years later, there was an unraveling of the relationship between King David and Ahithophel. Absalom, the son of David, was trying to rip the throne from David. Tear the crown from his head. When it all came out, he was being instructed and influenced how to do it by Ahithophel. Why would Ahithophel do it with sitting at the king's table for almost 40 years? What would make him do that? What would make him do that? Jewish history tells us Ahithophel was the grandfather of a girl named Bathsheba. The same Bathsheba David sinned with. The same Bathsheba that her husband was sent to the front line and killed. Ahithophel was wounded when David sinned with Bathsheba. He was so wounded, he was so hurt. He was hurt by David. For all those years, he was wounded and he couldn't see the revival that came to David's life. He couldn't see how God transformed his life. He couldn't see how God delivered him. He couldn't see the glorious revival that overcame all the previous failures. Ahithophel couldn't see the revival that came to David. He served the king at a distance. Just like many of you, you serve the king at a distance. Just like many people here today, you serve the king at a distance. You can feel the brush, you can hear the voice of the prophet, 
but you can't see the full picture of what he wants to do in your life. Because you've been hurt. You've been wounded. You go through all the right motions and you say all the right things, but you're wounded. Revival wants to invade your life and a revival wants to invade your house. Jesus wants you to come alive today. He wants all them dead things to come alive in your life. He wants to touch your family. He wants to touch your house. He wants to do something new in your life. He wants to do something fresh. He wants a fresh outpouring to fill your dwelling place, to fill your life. He wants it to invade your children and your children's children. He wants it to invade every area of your life but you will miss it through the wounded window. If you don't get out from behind it, you'll miss it. What a powerful message. What a powerful service. I believe you're leaving that room of isolation. You're leaving that vantage point, that view of that wounded window. It's so easy to get hurt and it's so easy to be wounded. But when the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I want you to know your praise has the power to protect you. And I want you to shout right now with a voice of triumph and realize that your shout is victorious. God is moving in your life in a powerful way. It's so, so easy to become hurt, bitter, wounded. But how many know God comes to set the captive free? That spirit of offense can get a hold of your life and you'll never fulfill the plan and purpose God has for you. You'll never see the fullness of God in the land of the living. When you have that vantage point of wounded windows, you will never see the power of God manifested the way you should. The greatest miracle I always tell people is the miracle of salvation, going from darkness to light, destruction to glory, crossing that gospel bridge and seeing the power of God released. Right where you're at right now, if Jesus Christ is not Lord and Savior of your life and you want to make him Lord and Savior, we're going to pray a prayer together. If you realize Jesus died for you, he rose from the grave, he has a plan and purpose for your life, and he can change my life. If you want to experience the life-changing power of Jesus, pray this prayer with me. If you want to be born again, if you want to experience salvation, pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my life and live. I give you everything. I love you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, that is the greatest miracle, the miracle of salvation. I want you to email us. We would love to join you in this journey with Jesus. Email us at bbworldevangelism.com. We want to walk with you. And we want to encourage you. And we want to believe by faith that God will do the impossible. Right now, if you've been wounded and hurt, I declare freedom. Lift your hands right where you're at to experience the freedom that comes from Jesus. The miracle working power of Jesus is invading your house right now. And God is breaking every chain of bitterness, every chain of hurt, every shackle of betrayal. Jesus is breaking it right now. He's doing the impossible. He loves you. He died for you. And I declare freedom right now. I declare personal revival. I declare revival power revival fire to hit your life i declare god is doing a new thing blessing and favor in jesus name amen consider partnering with us there's no greater thing than reaching souls consider giving a monthly support consider giving a one-time offering to what we're doing reaching souls all over the world we're seeing god's miracle working power all over i want you to just consider partnering with us right now God bless you, and God does miracles now. The podcast, The Bible in a Year with Jack Graham, is a moving and inspiring biblical audio experience that will help you master wisdom from the world's greatest book. In each episode, you'll learn to apply biblical principles to everyday life. Each cinematic episode is a journey through the Bible's most profound stories that will strengthen your appreciation of the Word and inspire you to keep learning. Listen to The Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts.
This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's a simple truth. No matter who you are, mental health challenges can affect you, and how you manage them can make all the difference. That's why everyone should have access to mental health support that meets them where they are and helps them get through. BetterHelp provides online therapy on your schedule. It's flexible, simple to use, and more affordable than in-person therapy. Connect with a licensed therapist selected just for you. Learn more at BetterHelp.com. That's better. H-E-L-P dot com. Hello, this is Matt Potter from Prey.com, and I want to tell you about this new juice cleanse I've tried from Squeeze.com. As someone who's always on the lookout for healthy ways to enhance my daily life, I must say this juice cleanse has been nothing short of rejuvenating. While drinking the juices provided by Squeeze.com, I felt less bloated and had a noticeable increase in my energy levels throughout the day. This cleanse has been a game changer. Head to squeeze.com and enter the code SUNDAY for free same-day local delivery or fast free delivery nationwide. Little hands and minds can start learning anytime. The good and the beautiful gives you everything you need to spark a love of lifelong learning. Give your preschoolers engaging, hands-on material built on high academic standards and wholesome values. Find a variety of free resources and affordable curriculum to ignite your child's curiosity. Start your journey now at goodandbeautiful.com. The good and the beautiful bring home a love of learning.